In this video, I'm going to walk you through my solution on ease to ranking cycle with a process heater, a cogeneration cycle. I've um, I've already typed out my ease code. I want to walk through some of the features of it. I started with my givens, so I defined my pressure, temperature at the given points, and I used an index notation here. So there's by using square brackets around the numbers, I can note the point at which I'm trying to record the information or specify a state and it will come up as an array later on, which will be convenient for looking at my data. I also used square brackets to denote the units of each of these variables. I didn't do that through the whole process, but you'll see that it helps in some locations. So I was given the pressure and the temperature at the turbine inlet. I was given the pressure at 0.7, halfway through the turbine, and I was given the pressure at the outlet of the turbine. The overall mass flow rate for the system was 30 kilograms per second, and one quarter of that mass was said to go through the process heater through 0.7 here. The other three quarters will go through to 0.8. I define my fluid as a variable using a dollar sign to denote it's a character string or a word, as, as you might call it, and that's marked with single quotes um, in, the, in the code. I start with a series of mass balances. So I look mass flow rates and the mass fraction. So I have the overall mass flow rate that goes through points four, five, and six. And then I have a fraction of that that goes through point seven, three, one quarter of that. And through points eight, one, and two, I get um, the one minus the quarter or three quarters times the overall mass flow rate. So I've done all of my mass balances there move on to point one or pump one. So from pump one, I know that the pressure at point one is equal to the pressure at point eight, or that the condenser is a constant pressure process. The points two, four, three, and seven all have the same pressure. So I define my pressure at point two according to the process heater and the mixing region are both constant pressure processes. I know that my work for an ideal pump is equal to the specific volume times the pressure uh, rise across the pump. So I define my work into pump one as the specific volume at point one times the pressure difference from point two from point one to point two. In order to solve that equation, I clearly need to know what the specific volume is at point one. So the next equation is where I look up the properties in ease for the specific volume of the fluid that I'm interested in, at the given pressure at P1, which has been defined. And then I use the assumption that the outlet of the condenser is at a quality of zero to get my second condition to find the specific volume. I also know that later on I'll want to know what the enthalpy is at that point, so I define it here. I'm using again the conditions at point one, which are the pressure and the quality. I know that the enthalpy, the outlet of the pump, Enthalpy at point two will be equal to the enthalpy at point one plus the work that I put into the pump using an energy balance on the pump. I then move on to the mixing chamber. In order to analyze the mixing chamber, I know you need to know the conditions at point three. I know that the pressure at point three is equal to the pressure at point seven based on the constant pressure through the process heater, neglecting frictional losses due to fluid flow. The enthalpy at point three, I then again need to define two conditions. So here I have the pressure at point three, and I know that the quality, or I'm assuming that the quality at point three is also equal to zero, or that the liquid comes out of the process heater fully saturated. And then do an energy balance on the mixer in order to find an expression that gives me enthalpy at point four. So I know that the, the enthalpy out at point four is going to be equal to the rate of enthalpy in from streams two and stream three. So I can do that energy balance and have one equation that will give me a relationship for the enthalpy at state four. As I move through the system, I'll use that enthalpy at state four in order to calculate the properties at point four. So here again, I assume that the quality is zero, that I'm in a saturated liquid state. This is a good assumption if you're really close to the saturation dome and you have a compressed liquid, um, the properties don't change very much. So we use that commonly. So I'm close to a quality of zero. 
there. And then I have my enthalpy, which I determined from the mixing chamber expression. Um, and I use that to find my specific volume. I define my pressures at the inlet and the outlet of the pump and use those in com combination with the specific volume to calculate the work going into pump two. Find the enthalpy at point five. I know that that's equal to the enthalpy at point four plus the work that I put into the system. If I were to do an energy balance on that pump, that's what it would look like. At this point, I don't have anything I need to calculate in the boiler because I'm given all of the uh, conditions necessary to define my state at point six. So I start to look at the turbine. So I can calculate the enthalpy at point six using the pressure and the temperature given in the problem statement. I can calculate the entropy as well using the same two parameters. And then I want to treat the turbine as isentropic. I use the isentropic condition to turn, determine the entropy at point seven, assuming that it's the same as the entropy going into the turbine. And then I can use the, both the pressure at point seven and the entropy at point seven to calculate the enthalpy there. I do something similar for point eight. I calculate the, I set entropy at point eight equal to the entropy at point six. I can calculate the enthalpy and the quality of the turbine outlet using the pressure at the turbine outlet and that defined entropy. So finally, if I want to calculate overall energy efficiency and or efficiency of the system, I want to do overall energy balances on some of the important components. The first thing I might be interested in is what is the heat that is extracted from the process heater. This will be our useful heat output from this, pro this cogeneration process. I find that doing an energy balance on the process heater. It's just equal to the mass flow rate through the process heater times the change in enthalpy through the heater. If I want to find out how much energy I had to put into the boiler, I use the N LPs at 0.6 and 0.5 across the boiler and multiply that by the mass flow rate at that point in the system. If I want to calculate the overall amount of energy that needs to be put into the pumps, I multiply the mass flow rate of each pump by the specific work input that I calculated when I was analyzing each pump individually. I can calculate the work out from, of the turbine using an energy balance on the turbine. I have the enthalpies of the, all of the fluid streams, so I multiply that by the mass flow rate that's undergoing each change in enthalpy. That gives me the network output or the total work output of the turbine. The network output of the entire cycle will be that useful work output of the turbine minus the amount of work that I had to put into the two pump. The overall utilization factor for the system, the cogeneration system, is given by all of the useful energy out divided by the amount of energy that had to be put into the system. So here I have the net work out, so the work of the turbines minus the work required to run the pumps, plus the heat that went out to the process heater. That quantity is then divided by the amount of energy that I put into the boiler. This gives me the overall utilization of the system. So I check my equations to see if they, I have the right number of equations and the right number of variables. In this case, I do. If I were to remove one of my equations it's necessary to solve the problem, you can see that if I try to solve the problem, I will get an error message that says there are fewer equations than there are variables. One way to help debug this is to try to go ahead and solve it. It will give you an error message, says that it's underspecified, and then you can say that you'd like to see the debug information. You can then see which variables have only been used once in the set of equations and try to find the, the common component between these two and which of these variables should be related. So in this case, you can see that the equation that I got rid of related the net work out to the work in to the pumps and the work out of the turbine. So that's the equation that was missing. So I can check that. I'm good on terms of number of variables and number of equations, I go ahead and solve the system. Here's the solution giving some of the variables that are not arrays. So here I have a utilization factor of 52%. So 52% of the energy I put in is coming out as either useful work or heat uh, going to the process heater. In the arrays table, I have everything that I had defined as an array. So these are correspond to the locations in the cycle. So I can see that it all of the enthalpies at different locations in the system, the mass flow rates as I define them, the pressures as I define them throughout the system. 
The temperature and the specific volume, I didn't calculate at every location, so I have sporadic information for that. So one thing that might be of interest to you is to find out, you know, how does this overall utilization factor change as I vary the amount of mass that goes through the system, uh, through the process heater, compared to through the condenser? One way I can do something like that is to define a parametric variable. So I'm going to click on the button New Parametric Table. I'm going to decide which parameters I want to see in the parametric tra table. In this case, I want to see the utilization factor. I want to see what the mass fraction is. That's the variable I actually want to control. And perhaps I also want to know how much energy I get out from the turbine in each of these cases and how much heat I get out of the process heater. I'll use those as my variables in the table. If I want to set the differences in the mass fraction, I click on this little arrow button here and I can choose my values for mass fraction. So if I want to do mass fractions between 0 and 1, um, and I want to do them every point 0.1, I'm going to choose 11 values between 0 and 1. It will give me an even spacing. I can also enter values manually, increment them. I can have a variety of options for how I want to define the variables. I'm going to just use this linear spacing for now. It's asking if it's okay that it adds a row to the parametric table because it defaults to 10 rows and I chose 11, so I'll say yes, that's fine. Now I have a variation in the mass fraction going from 0 to 1 by 0.1 spacing. If I want to solve this then for all of my cases, I click on the button here. It says it gives me an error message because the mass fraction is previously set to a value. In order to fix the error message, I need to undefine it in my original equation. So here I'm just going to comment out this line. So I can either comment it by adding quotation marks before and after, or I can comment it using one of these commands that have that come up when I right click. So now I pull back. I, I want to see my parametric table again. I click on the screen button to solve the table. And now I've evaluated the utilization factor, the work out, and the process heat out for all of these different cases. So if I wanted to plot that information, I go to plots, new plot window. It's going to be an XY plot. I can start to define the plot here. You can, of course, come up with more creative names for your plots, more descriptive. On the x-axis, I'm going to put my mass fraction. On the y-axis, I'll choose my utilization factor. If I click on automate up, automatic update, it, if I change the, any values, this will automatically update my plot. Here, then, is a plot of my utilization factor as a function of my, my mass fraction. So this approach is one, which is what we expect. If all of the mass is going to process heater, we don't have losses associated with the turbine, and we don't have any energy being extracted that's not going to something useful. So this is an expected value here. And our maximum um, efficiency of our process, if it's just a standard ranking cycle going through a turbine with no process heating, is just under 40%, which seems like a reasonable value for this cycle. So that's a way that I can do a plot and evaluate different properties of the system by defining a parametric variable. I can do something fancier with plots if I um, choose, again, an XY plot. Maybe this time I want to show the difference in energy between the process heat and the work out of the turbine. So again, I'm going to create a plot that is going to be energy usage, the function of mass fraction. So I'll choose my x-axis to be mass fraction again. The work out of the turbine will be one of my variables. I'm going to say automatic update. I'm also going to add a legend to this one. I say OK. Here's my work out of the turbine. I can move my legend around. I have the work out of the turbine. I might want to change this and add units or something to it here. Then if I want to add the useful work out of the process heater to this, I could overlay this plot. So I'm overlaying that same plot here. I'm going to put the work out, the, the heat that comes out to the process heater on top of my mass fraction. I'm going to automatically update and add a legend item for this one as well. So here now I have how much energy is going out by process heat. Based on these results, I might decide to change the scaling of my plot. And I could obviously do some things to make this plot look prettier. 
changing the way that the values are displayed. Notice that I never completely eliminate the work coming out of the turbine because all of the energy that goes through to process heat is going through a partial um, section of the turbine. So we're not just converting to process heat. We are using some of the energy to run the turbine. So all of these results seem reasonable to me, and I hope I've given you an idea of how you can use ease, what the syntax looks like, and some ways of plotting things using parametric variables.